Hey everyone. Uh, so myself, David Chennai. Uh, I work at a company called Bitebeam. We build an IoT platform. Uh, it's kind of like a data pipeline that you can uh, subscribe to and send your data. Uh, it's startup. We do some crazy stuff and uh, we build things in Rust. So I hope someone here. Hey, like, can you raise your hands if you know of the Rust programming language? Fine. Yeah, so it's a systems level programming language, quite similar to C and C++. Uh, it's not like uh, Python or Go where you have like a runtime and things like that. Uh, you have even more control. Uh, but at the same time, it's unlike C uh, and C++ because it takes away a lot of the troubles related to it. Uh, it makes it easier to work with. Uh, as a developer, you don't have to deal with different build uh, chains. Uh, yeah, so today we'll be talking about a very specific part of the Rust programming language, uh, which is related to asynchronous programming. Yeah, uh, you can transfer the learnings that you get from here to other programming languages because it's not just in Rust, you have async uh, programming concepts, you have it in other languages, including C, sorry, C and uh, Java, JavaScript, Python. So yeah, so to get a gist of what I'm going to be talking about, let's start with a basic understanding of computing. So in computing, you if you have multiple cores, right? What do I mean by multiple cores? CPU cores, right? If let's say you have two CPU cores, the operating system allows you to multiply that, right, by using the concept of threads. So I hope you have heard of multi-threading, right? Yeah. So multi-threading is basically trying to uh, extrapolate the number of cores that you have on your system and run things uh, kind of parallelly. It's not actually parallel because as I'm illustrating here, Right? Parallel literally means you have two cores which are running two tasks at the same time. Whereas concurrent means it's, which is what is happening with threads or in our case, async uh, tasks. What's happening is you do a task, then you yield for a while or you give away control, another task runs and then you go back to the task that you were running earlier. So what would this help with? Any ideas? What would it, what would asynchronous programming or concurrency help with? API calls. Huh? API calls. API calls. Okay. So, uh, like web servers, right? How many users are trying to log into Facebook at a time, right? Uh, if you are doing multi-threading. For every user, uh, not, let's not talk about multi-threading. Let's talk about uh, if every user had to have a core dedicated to them, right, to service their requests. How many cores would you require, right? Billions. And which CPU has a, a billion core, or like which server set has billion, right? Billion cores. It's literally impossible, and you don't require that much overhead. Uh, that is where the concept of concurrency comes in. If you have multi-threading, right, the operating system deals with it for you. It decides which request gets that resource, right? Which thread has to run on the CPU at that moment, right? That is dealt with by using concurrency, the concept of threads. The thread is managed by the operating system and that is what is being illustrated right underneath. Adding on top of it is the concept of green threads, right? Green threads allow you to basically do the same thing, but you don't have to hand over control to the operating system. You don't have to say to the operating system, deal with this for me, right? You can do it on your own, right? Inside the process that you are running, you have complete control over who, which request gets run and uh, that means that you don't have to do memory shifting. So, there is a concept of context, right? 
whenever you are running a process you have to have some memory associated with it what happens with multi threading or when the operating system is in control is basically you have to move stuff from what is known as user space into kernel space right that's some copying some cloning all of that is happening in there you don't want to be doing that all the time so it's better to have green threads if you want to do quick and very minute changes right so if you are doing small tasks it's better to have green threads than to have operating system threads so os threads are almost the norm when you are writing things that are long running right tasks that are long running whereas if your tasks are very short it's better to have green threads let's talk about some keywords right in most programming languages including python you will have thread code which has these concepts right async right which basically tells the compiler that we are going to define an asynchronous block right afterwards and there is a wait which is basically telling the operating is telling the compiler that wait here for a while till this thing resolves right you can go to another task if something is something else is happening on a certain different thread right so different not operating system thread green thread yeah uh, and run that give that more uh, yeah so okay uh, threads the operating system does this preemptively any idea what is preemptive can anyone define what is preemptive Huh? It stops before completion. It stops before completion, right? Yeah. And what is non-preemptive? It stops until the process is over. Yeah. Until the task is completed. Right? The opposite of uh, it waits until. So that's there are two concepts that are important here. One is cooperative, and the other is non-cooperative. So cooperative multitasking, which is what asynchronous and the use of async await. mainly is for allows you to write programs wherein you are giving control from the programmer's end to the to whoever is managing to say move from here to the other i'm done with work now you can move from here to the next task that is what a wait is for basically an async block until it completes you are going to wait and then once that resolves you're moving to the next task Yeah, I kind of understand that this is getting a bit boring, but yeah, uh, let's go into some illustrations. Maybe that will help, right? So yeah, uh, run times, right? The operating system is kind of similar here. Like the operating system also takes takes tasks or processes or threads, right? And then runs them in literally looking like it looks like parallel threads. but it's actually concurrent here you will run one thread then you will hand over control to another thread and the operating system is preemptive or non cooperative which means it will stop a thing give it to another uh, give it an uh, stop a process and give it to another uh, give resources to another process right by using scheduling algorithms so in operating systems you might have heard of scheduling algorithms like round robin right so uh, there are many other uh, scheduling algorithms similarly uh, the operating system does that for us whereas inside your process when you are using a reactor right to handle green threads you are doing something similar you are handing a task to that reactor and the task will a lot a thread that it has to run on so resources are being managed by this reactor right let's look at some more illustrations i have tried to make as many illustrations as possible so when i started off writing asynchronous programming right i made a lot of mistakes everyone makes mistakes and everyone learns from them so what i wrote what i thought was basically if i wrote task 1 dot await and then i wrote task 2 dot await both tasks would run at the same time but that's not what happens so task 1 takes up till t1 seconds to complete right it goes from 0 to 100% completion and then t2 starts right task 2 starts and ends at t2 seconds right 
this is not what you probably wanted. What you instead might have wanted is let both tasks run and then we'll wait, uh, then we'll get both results, which is what join lets you do. Join allows you to take two asynchronous tasks and merge them together. And once both of them have completed is when you'll get the result. So even though task one completed at T1, the result of this will be resolved only at the end of T2 because you have to finish the second task as well. The same if T1 was larger than T2, you would get the result at T1. Right. So I hope that illustration is more knowledge, like more understandable. Okay. Similarly, let's say you don't actually want the slowest uh, resolver. You want the quickest resolver. Who resolves or like who gives you the result the earliest, right? Because you are basically waiting for something, and that is what asynchronous programming is all about. You can have a select block, right? Select block is like a race. You are running a race, and the quickest to reach the finish line is when that race ends. The other task gets cancelled. Cancelled as in you don't want the result. You're like, okay, throw it, throw this away. And you can use the result of this to do more further computation. Right? That's what this is illustrating here. This code block here. Uh, then there's also the concept of spawning. So thread spawning, right? What is thread spawn? You're creating a new thread. You're passing some computation to that thread, and everything runs on that thread. You are not uh, very considerate of what actually is happening on that thread, right? Your process, whoever the parent process is, has created a child thread, and you're, you're, you don't care about what's uh, what's the result over. The same concept here as well where you have a task one, right? The moment there is an await block inside that task one, right? Control is yielded to task two or whoever other task is running in the same reactor, right? The reactor does all of that for you. And here, as you can see, since both are running in separate tasks, sorry, separate uh, green threads, right? Spawn, you have spawned a separate green thread here, basically. Both tasks will reach completion, right, at T1 and T2 seconds. That makes sense, right? And you can do further computation in those green threads, or you can use a concept of channels. Ever heard of the concept of channels? Channels. Okay. Uh, so in programming, multi-threaded programming, uh, you have uh, different tasks, right? Different threads running different tasks. And once those tasks complete, you might want to pass some kind of memory or some kind of object back to a central thread, right? So use a concept called channels. So what is a channel? Channel is the same as, uh, let's say, a bridge, right? Wherein you pass uh, a car on top of that bridge to the other side. Right. Similarly, you have two roads, a car passes through the bridge to the other road. So two threads, you are passing one object to the other thread. That's basically what you are doing with channels. You can use the same concept here, where once you have completed task 1, you can pass an object from task 1 to task 2 or the opposite, right? vice versa. And channels is something that helps you do that. You can also use other things not just channels, that's the concept of a lock, right? Mutexes, have you heard of mutexes? Yeah, so mutex is mutual exclusion. That is what it's shortened to. Uh, yeah, mutual exclusion allows you to have two things running in contention of a certain object, and whoever wins that contention gets to hold control <coughs> over that, right? Uh, so you can do things like a database, right? You can create a database, you can write data into that database, you can read data from that database, you can do all of that. So task one could basically be a request that is asking to get some data from the database. And task two could be writing some data into that database. So, yeah, think whatever you want to think of that in those terms. Uh, yeah, there are even further concepts 
that might be interesting to learn about. Uh, we just mentioned tasks, but I actually did not go much into depth because that would take us too much time here. And I just wanted to introduce you folks to uh, asynchronous programming first. Uh, then there's also the concept of futures, which is what actually is happening under the uh, inside async blocks. You're basically creating a future. What is a future? It's basically a contract with the uh, that the programmer is saying at this point you can in the future wait for something. Right? So futures is what you are awaiting on. Tasks are what you are creating with those futures. And then streams. Right? Streams are kind of similar to uh, the concept of iterators. Have you heard of an iterator? Right? In Python, there's a for, for loops, you can wait on infinite loops, uh, like infinite uh, array of things, right? where those infinite arrays are constantly being supplied. It's like a queue. You keep adding objects onto that queue, you keep popping objects out of those queues. Right? So similarly, streams allow you to constantly keep adding things into the stream. And every few seconds, if you are pulling that stream, using the dot await uh, keyword, you will get an object out of that stream. Right? So yeah, think whatever you want to think of it in those terms. But you are basically getting the basic idea of how servers are written in the modern age. Right? Uh, so why am I talking about asynchronous Rust here? Right? Just trying to introduce everyone to the Rust programming language, of course. Uh, we have a Rust meetup, which is happening in Kochi for a while now. Uh, Mark, uh, Andrew, we have all uh, been participants there. Uh, we try to teach the Rust programming language and evangelize it to anyone who's interested, because we see that there's a very huge scope to the programming language, right? that can be exploited by all of us like easier right so if you are interested i hope you explore further into the programming language also asynchronous programming as a concept is taking wings right now like it is changing how programming is done and hopefully you will also get to explore it in a short while from now yeah thanks any questions? <clears throat> yeah, so, okay, uh, that's, uh, I think I showed that in that image, right? So yeah, uh, as you can see, the OS thread, right, is what is handled by the operating system, right? It creates multiple threads and allows you to run tasks on those threads, right? Whereas async tasks are handled by the process itself, where the process creates its own reactor, right? Its own runtime, and then handles separate threads, right? Not operating system threads, but an abstraction above that thread, where each thread gets to run these. Like it's, it's kind of similar to an operating system thread, but it's all being handled by the process itself, so you don't have to do memory switching. You don't have to switch between uh, the processes, that's the user space in memory, and move it to kernel space in memory. So like, that's like a boundary, right? Operating systems create a boundary so that hackers or whoever is interested in getting data from the operating system, uh, like, okay, so in operating systems, right, you are running multiple processes at the same time. So you would not want to have uh, a process running in such a way that it can handle the memory of another process, a completely different process. Let's say you're running a malware on your operating system. The operating system creates boundaries so that that malware will not have access to, let's say, your uh, password, uh, password box or password safety, or whatever application you're using, right? Because both tasks, both processes are running on the same operating system. They have kind of the similar memory, but then operating system handles all of these things 
in such a way that there is a boundary across the memory that these processes are plotted. When you are creating a thread, you are basically creating a memory location inside the kernel, right? which is high sec highly secure. The operating system has to keep it secure for these reasons. And the, the similar memory that is allotted to the uh, to the user space, right, to the process itself, which it has even more control over, right. When you, it wants to access the thread, right, then the thread is running inside the uh, inside the CPU, right, which the operating system is controlling. And I have to illustrate this further, but uh, is there like a pen and paper that I can use here? I think actually we should take this out because I kind of have some trouble stating it with words. But basically the operating system has to have total control over it. That is why it can't let the process run in user space. It has to move it into kernel space then run it. Which is not good because then like you are doing copying from here to there all the time. I hope that kind of made sense. I'll illustrate it to you further. So let's say you have an operating system, right, that is being used to run a server with a bill, uh, like Nginx, right, a server like Nginx, right, have you heard of Nginx? Yeah, basically. Yeah, so Nginx is a web server, it's running all of these things, if it was only using uh, threads, right, for each and every thread, you will basically have to create an OS thread. Like each and every, sorry, each and every request, you'll have to create a separate OS thread to handle that particular request, right? Every time you will tell the operating system create a thread there. Just clarify, like, in the recent days, you said, right? Some projects are coming. Yeah, it's just when they moved it, right, to asynchronous programming. If I can take some help of some blogs here. Basically here they're saying that they boosted the performance of Nginx by nine times by using a thread pool instead of using uh, a single thread or like multi-threading. When you are writing multi-user applications, right, uh, with the scales that you are having these days, right, you will have to ha uh, serve like millions of users at a time, which means you have to create millions of threads, and creating operating system threads, right, is impractical because then there's like a lot of overhead that goes in, right. Each thread you have to particular uh, provide a PID, you have to provide uh, a lot of resources from the operating system side. Whereas with uh, green threads, you don't have to do that. You are just having like a few uh, operating system thread and then you are handling a thread pool by using the reactor, right? The reactor handles these th this thread pool and provides the resources that these asynchronous threads or these green threads want. And the green thread, every all the memory is being handled inside that reactor itself. Let the language as in, I did not get you. Yeah, so it is Let the operating system handle it. No, no, no. So, like even in that case, like even, even in the case of JavaScript, right? The JavaScript engine, that's V8. Uh, is basically using something similar, 
right? It's a runtime, right? And that runtime is allotting a thread pool and doing all of these asynchronous tasks through it, right? Workers and all of that concept is basically going through this, right? Service workers or whatever. Yeah. So it has a thread pool, and that in that thread pool, these asynchronous tasks are being run kind of parallelly by using the concepts of concurrency. Any other questions? Kind of know this is like very hard topic to teach in like one hour. Yeah, yeah. thanks.